Hi, this is Alec from Groovy Entertainment. Today we got another book on tape to play for you. Today, book of Garfield Longest Cat Nap for 1989. So let's get started. This is the Golden Story book and tape called Garfield's Longest Cat Nap. The pictures were done by Jim Davis, and the story was written by Jack C. Harris and Jim Kraft. Whenever you hear this sound, You'll know that it's time to turn the page. Are you ready to begin? Find the page where you see Garfield in a magic land of food. Garfield woke up one morning in a magic land of food. Ice cream cones sprouted from the ground, and cookies grew on trees. The rivers flowed with hot fudge, and the roads were made of lasagna. I don't know how I got here, but I'm staying, shouted Garfield in delight. He was just about to gobble up several miles of lasagna when he heard John's voice. Garfield! Wake up, you fat, lazy cat, said John. You've slept all day. Garfield slowly opened one eye. Thanks for ruining the best dream I ever had, he complained. You remind me of a story written by Washington Irving. John continued. It's about Rip Van Winkle, a man who slept for 20 years. 20 years? 20 years is a catnap for me, said Garfield. I could do that with one eye closed. I'd have to sleep for 50 years to feel really rested. Odie! Called John. It's dinner time! Now that's worth waking up for, thought Garfield. Odie rushed into the kitchen. He was in such a hurry that he tripped over his tongue and fell flat on his face. We need a new dog, Garfield said to John. This one doesn't work right at all. There's pizza for Odie and me, said John. And here's a nice salad for you, Garfield. Salad? Cried Garfield. That's diet food. Overweight cats need to eat lightly, John explained. I'm not overweight. I'm under tall, insisted Garfield. He collapsed on the floor. Why couldn't I live in a world without diets? He moaned. That night, when the clock struck midnight and John and Odie were sound asleep, Garfield crept to the refrigerator. There's more than one way to feed a cat, thought Garfield. This leftover pizza is just what I need to wreck my diet. Garfield sneaked back to bed, gobbled down his pizza, and dozed off with a sly smile on his face. Garfield was surprised when he woke up the next morning and found himself outside. Gee, I must have walked in my sleep, he said. He stretched his arms above his head. Oh, that was some terrific catnap. For the first time in my life, I feel really rested. An old man with a beard approached Garfield. You finally woke up, said the man. Fifty years is a long time to sleep, even for you, Garfield. It's John, thought Garfield. But he's older. Fifty years older. Garfield smiled. I don't believe it. I actually slept for fifty years. He thought proudly. There were some changes while you were asleep, said John. Look up at the sky, for instance. We live in domed cities now. Our high-tech sun lamps give us all the benefits of sunlight without making us hot. You mean there aren't sunbeams anymore? Garfield asked. But sunbeams were just perfect for napping in. I wish they had asked me before they made the change. Ah, here comes the mail carrier, said John. You'll find this interesting. This is perfect timing, said Garfield, diving behind a bush. After 50 years, I can use a little fun. I just hope my claws aren't rusty. The mail carrier came up the walk. Garfield pounced. Clang! Garfield bounced right off the mail carrier. What happened? 
said a stunned Garfield. How do you like our robot mail carrier? Asked John. With his aluminum body, he's completely protected against your teeth and claws. Maybe so, grumbled Garfield. But just wait till I get my hands on a can opener. Come inside, said John. I'll show you more new things. In the living room, one whole wall was covered with TV screens. This super video system has 500 channels, said John. Great. I'll never run out of shows to watch, said Garfield as he grabbed the remote control. But when he began flipping channels, all he saw was exercise programs. Everyone loves these exercise programs, John observed. That's all they show on TV now. This future world isn't much fun, complained Garfield. John looked at his watch. Time for dinner, he said. Now you're talking, exclaimed Garfield. One thing that hasn't changed in 50 years is my appetite. I figure I've got about 50,000 meals to catch up on. Odie, John called. Odie rushed into the room as fast as an old dog could rush. He had a big beard, too. Good old Odie, thought Garfield. Odie was in too much of a hurry. His feet got tangled in his beard, and he fell flat on his face. Same dumb old Odie, thought Garfield, shaking his head. John, Garfield, and Odie went into the kitchen and stood in front of a huge computer. All you have to do is press the right button, and you can get any food you want in any amount you want at any time you want, explained John. And it only takes a few seconds. This is the kind of future I like, cried Garfield. Stand aside. I'm going to give this machine a real test. Garfield asked the computer to serve him 200 pounds of lasagna. And that's just my before dinner snack, he said, pushing the start button. The computer hummed, clicked, and whirred. In a few seconds, it beeped, and a tiny orange pill dropped into Garfield's hand. What's this? said a confused Garfield. How do you like your lasagna? asked John. What lasagna? answered Garfield. John continued. All our food is in the form of pills now. That little pill contains all the flavor and vitamins of 200 pounds of lasagna, but you won't feel stuffed. But I like feeling stuffed, cried Garfield. Would you like an ice cream pill? asked John. Uh, cried Garfield. I hate the future. No sunbeams, robot mail carriers, boring TV, and now fake food. I want real food. Give me real food. Garfield frantically began pushing all the buttons on the computer. The machine started spitting pills everywhere. Soon it was smoking and shaking. You've overloaded the computer, shouted John. It's going to explode. Suddenly, Garfield found himself back in his own bed. A morning sunbeam peeked through the window. So it was only a nightmare, thought Garfield. What a relief. That's the last time I eat pizza for a late night snack. Then he smiled. But it doesn't mean I can't have it for breakfast. And with that, he raced off to the kitchen. So that was Garfield, Longest Cat Nap for 1989. So if you like, subscribe, share, and comment, and have a groovy day. Our next book will be Garfield the Fussy Cat.